Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Double D Vintage Baseball Cards. And this is a Turn Back the Clock episode. And it's episode number six. And I'm joined by a co-host today, an extra special guest, Shane from Shoebox Legends. What's up, Shane? Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. I'm equal parts uh, excited and honored. So I really uh, appreciate it. I think we feel the same way. And then we got Adam Flo, Splendid Sports, my co-host, my standard. Yeah, man, going, this, is, this is awesome. I, I uh, This is going to be a really fun one and educational for me, at least. I know that. Yeah, this is going to be insane. So what we're going to be talking about tonight are vintage parallels. And vintage meaning anything from, you know, our childhood in the 80s all the way back to the beginning. And we're going to really dive into a certain type of parallel cards, which are these buybacks that tops put in packs and we'll talk about these later and they have stamps stamps on them and you can pull them in packs. Shane is the expert in this and he's going to be the one that really dives in and tells us all about this. And the reason we're doing this is because me and Adam both, especially me when I was, when I found Shane about a year ago, he, he has this entire album of these parallels of cards from just random cards, like, you know, 75 Tops card with a stamp on it that Tops put repackage into packs and you can pull them in, in certain things. So we're going to discuss those and a way to a way for other collectors to like find different avenues to go after. And, and, and if you're looking for scarcity and, and what that means and what are they worth and just kind of dive into that. And then we're also going to talk about a few other things like we've got the 1958 Tops, which had white and the more rare yellow in cards from number uh two to 110 and then the 69 top set had yellow and white which was the more rare so they reversed it from cards 440 to 511 and then we got the tiffany sets um desert storm cards um error cards we're not going to go so deep in those but i wanted to mention those and is, is there before we get started but before we introduce uh, Shane a little more, is there any other sets that you guys can think of or any other parallels that we should talk about before we take this dive? I think you touched on the big ones. Yeah. I'll, I'll be learning from you on the, the vintage portion. I'm, you know, I'm aware of those vintage parallels, but I'm not an expert in those, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Well, well, that was about as deep as we're going with that one. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I have one. That was it. I I was mentioning some sets because you really want to go on the other aspect. But before we dive into that, we wanted to do show some recent pickups in our personal collections. We're all collectors here. Me, Shane, and Adam, we love collecting sports cards. And me, it's baseball cards. And for Shane, it's all kinds of things. And Adam. So we're going we're gonna to show off a few. So first, before we do that, Shane, why don't you tell us a little bit, of, since you're the guest, tell us a little bit about yourself and your collecting experience. Because if you guys don't know Shane is an expert in a lot of baseball card knowledge and a lot of stuff from the 90s and just some really cool stuff that I'm sure he's learned from other people but I've learned so much from him because I was collecting in oblivion so it, it he we're so like honored to have him on this show as a guest because of his expertise in these things and the and just the you know the passion that he has for all these different types of cards out there so shane take it away uh yeah so I, i've been uh you know i collected when i was a kid uh typical story took a break you know during high school and college uh but got back in around 2007 or so um as an adult so i've been back in about 15 years now um pretty steadily for those 15 years just going down different avenues um wrote a sports card blog for about a dozen years um every week so it's very similar to youtube just uh, kind of in writing. There's a whole community of people out there that uh, share information and uh, stories and pickups and things like that uh, on their blog. So I was kind of part of that community. But um, it's a lot of work to do that, um, making a post and scanning in all the cards, writing it up. Um, it would take hours. So after about 12 years of that, I uh, switched over to YouTube about two years ago. And uh, I'm a very lo-fi channel, just hit the record button, show cards and talk about it. And uh, it's been a lot easier to keep up with that and do that on a a regular basis. So I'm relatively new to the YouTube uh, community, but I've been in the sports card hobby as an adult for a decade and a half now. So 
Awesome. Love it. Adam, do you have any, any questions for Shane or anything? Yeah. Shane, what do you, is the blog still online is, or is it something you took down? No, it's still up. Um, so, I mean, you can reach it and all the articles that I wrote, uh, you know, during that time are up there, but it's not anything I've added anything new to pretty much since I moved to YouTube, it was really a cut and dry, you know, from one to the other. Got it. Yeah. I, it, it, yeah. Like YouTube's like kind of the lazy man's um, blog. You know what I mean? It's, it's so much easier because I, I, I do for my job. I do a little of that like blogging stuff and it's man, it is a lot of work. Absolutely. Um, but I love, I love that. I love that you did that for 12 years, man. That is incredible. Yeah. I, I'm very, uh, I guess, committed to, uh, you know, I don't think I missed a meet a week in uh, 12 years. So, wow. and uh, same thing on YouTube, try to post, you know, maybe five or so videos a week. So um, I just, I just love the hobby and I enjoy talking about it. So it's nothing I'd rather do. It's awesome. So awesome. I was, I watched your video today uh, with your pickups, Pedro Martinez card in there, man. Yeah. Like, so yeah, I'm so happy is. that Dylan, Dylan turned me on to your channel. Cause it, like YouTube is so much that, and you only see what's in your feed. And it's like, so I really appreciate when someone tells me about another channel that I hadn't discovered yet for some reason. And now I'm like binging on all your videos, man. And uh, so happy I found, found your channel and you're a new England guy and you're a Pearl Jam fan. So absolutely, yep. we got a lot in common. This is going to be fun. <laughs> all right. Well, let's, let's show some cards. So recent pickups, just fun, personal collection stuff. Um, Adam, why don't you go first? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I I was on a big buying spree over the last you know, few months. Uh, there's a bunch of cards I haven't even shown. These are just a handful of them. I'm going to go through them pretty quick, but um, I am, I'm trying to stay a little focused. I know some people don't like to be focused, but I found that uh, I get the most enjoyment when I go down a certain lane or like with this one, uh, I'm doing the PSA set registry. I try not to do the the big sets in the registry because I'm not a volume collector. I collect, um, I try to collect like, you know, just certain things and, and keep it under control. So one of the sets I started to collect a while back was the 1976 tops all time all-star set. Oh, nice. And I, I decided I'm going to try to do it in PSA nine because back a while back, I, I picked up just, just cause I thought they were cool. I picked up like the Lou Gehrig, the Ted Williams, the Babe Ruth, and I got them for pretty good prices. Uh, so I got a lot of the tough ones out of the way. So I figured, let me just do the whole thing. There's only like maybe 10 or something like that. Um, but this is one I needed. And I'm not a, like, I know guys know Ty Cobb a lot better than me and his cards and everything. And uh, obviously this is a very long time post playing days cards. But uh, this photo for me is like, look at this, like one of the best photos I've ever seen, if not the best photo of Ty Cobb ever. Like yeah, that's a a photo back, is, but, photos insane. insane. Uh, look at that. I got to get a little close. Like you, I mean, a lot of people have seen this card, but like I said, I'm trying to do it in PSA nine and I'm two away now. I need the lefty Grove and the pie trainer. So wow. haven't found those two. If anyone out there has a lead on uh, PSA nine of those, let me know because I got, I got them all except for those two. And this was a big one to get because uh, you know, it's Ty Cobb. And again, just for me, love, 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 love the image. I know, I know it's not playing error, but is that his first tops card? I would imagine. Uh, you, you know what? I don't know. That's a good question. That it might be. It probably, yeah. Yeah, probably. that's kind of that's pretty sick. You might. Is be that right a, there, a rookie? Yeah. Is that a rookie? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's a rookie, but I bet you it's his first tops card. It's pretty. That's cool. cool. That yeah, awesome. I love that one. So uh, a few others here. Now, my parents were born in Brockton, Massachusetts, and they grew up there. The pride of Brockton is Rocky Marciano. So here we got 1954 top scoop. Marciano, oh, nice. this is when he, he won the won the heavyweight championship. Look at this. Look at this card. Dude, Unbelievable. That's an awesome card. Yeah, man. What an image. Wow. My mom, my mom uh, was a hairdresser. She one of her claims to fame was she used to uh, do the hair of Rocky Marciano's mother. When she no was way. young in a hair salon, yeah. So I mean, just uh, this guy, man, is just you know. Brockton was a nice town back then. Uh, Shane, you probably know Brockton. It, it's not a nice town anymore, but uh, <laughs> you know, he was he was the man in Brockton. That's Everybody. a James, that's a James Elite Hunter card right there. He would yep. love that card. So for you know, just for reasons like that, um, special sentimental things, I I wanted to pick that one up. And honestly, 
those are pretty affordable for for me i think compared to like some of the other cards from that era so um all right so i'm trying to do the mickey mantle run and uh, i needed the 69 tops mantle this fits in perfectly with what we're looking at today this is maybe one of the most famous parallels vintage parallels ever this is the wow. 69 mantle last name in white uh, oh my pretty, gosh pretty gosh. recent pickup I, that i never showed yet uh wow. so what i love about this is i was worried like i was worried that psa wasn't going to count it on the registry because it's you know whatever it's uh the, the the white version but they do they count the yellow and the white for the mantle run so it it uh, got me that one in the registry, which was nice. So I've been working on a mantle run, uh, wow. just 53 through 69. And that, that card is so hard to find even halfway decently centered. So that, that is a killer example. Thanks. Yeah. That, that, um, in the, the white, the, it's a, it's a pricey card. So it was a, it was a big one to get, um, but I got it pretty recently. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. I'll, I'll let you guys go. Um, maybe, maybe I'll show a couple we, more. We by can the go way. back to that. Yeah. No, that's good. That's okay. good. Let's, right. let's, you show some now. You sure? That was pretty epic. Yeah, I figure I'll, I'll end on the mantle there. You know, that's a good one to, to stop on. I don't that, I don't want to. Uh, dude, that was insane. Uh, you're holding out on me. I hadn't seen that one. That's that's an incredible pickup. Yeah, I, I, I like I said, I went wow. I went a little wild there. And so I'm trying I'm doing a self-imposed like no big cards until the national. <laughs> let's see if I can. <laughs> let's see if I can said, hold I said that today to myself. I said yeah. no more cards until the national. Uh, I mean, I say this a lot. <laughs> we gotta hold ourselves to it. We gotta do this together, yes. man. Come on. Yes. All Here right, Shane. What do you got for us? What have you been picking up, and what are the reasons? Yeah, so I've been I've been kind of living in uh, budget pickup land the past few weeks, just on uh, one of those stretches, grabbing cheaper cards. I, I love all cards, expensive, non-expensive. Just um, so I have a couple here uh, that remind me of you guys. That I think you'll appreciate. Uh, these have all come in recently. I've um, got a 54 Bowman. Uh, let me try to get this in the light. Uh, light's killing me here. But 54 Bowman Bob Avila. There Bobby we go. Avila. And uh, it's a low grade. It's a PSA 3. But I uh, was interested in this card because he's a uh, batting champion in 1954. Uh, Dude. Won the batting title. And uh, he's from Mexico. He's in the Mexican Baseball Hall of Fame. And uh, he actually managed a team in the Mexican League. And I think was even the president of the Mexican baseball league for a while. And they, he passed away uh, maybe 20 years ago, but uh, this was $14. So, whoa, um, 14 bucks. It's yeah. so awesome. That's couldn't so awesome. Pass, couldn't pass that up. Um, then this one, uh, I know Adam will appreciate this one, but recently oh, yeah. got this, in. this is the uh, Argentina rock cards, uh, Eddie Vedder. Yep. Yes. Oh, I love that. Uh, 1997, I think it is. I got I got to ask you this. Do, do you know if PSA you probably don't care but like I like to grade all my cards. Do you know if PSA grades those those cards? I think they will. Um, okay. I plan to send this in. It's the same size as a standard trading card. It was pack issued, you know, albeit in Argentina and I believe I've seen graded uh graded copies of these. So I think you can sub them. Okay, cool. Um, Shane, then, Shane Shane loves graded cards. I got I got tons of graded cards. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. In fact, the next one we're going to look at, so this one you'll appreciate, though, and I think I may have shown you this even, but um, yes. this is the Topps Black Parallel of the 2022 MVP caliber uh, Shohei Otani and Mike Trout card. Um, so they've been doing this parallel for like 20 years. Um, it's numbered out of 71, uh, so relatively scarce uh, serial numbering, and uh, I just love it. It's kind of like the modern take on the old combo cards that we all love. Um, and, you know, two high caliber, you know, stars of the game, uh, that I enjoy collecting. So, uh, Hey Shane, I know, I know what you paid for that. So I would like other people to know so they can no, dude, that thing is incredible. Yeah. I, I mean, I got this for mind. $50, um, which is, yeah. uh, you know, pretty reasonable. I think when you consider who's on the card. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And it's graded a nine, like with those black borders too. That's a toughie. They, that's... they grade really tough. So I was happy yeah. with that for, for 50 bucks. And then, um, uh, the last you got one, another I got, one? I got one more. Um, yeah, please. Kind of a, just time. a funny one. Um, yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this card before. Um, it's from Classic Baseball, and uh, Wade Boggs is holding like a rubber chicken here <laughs> alongside the bat. Oh, my God. I've never seen that. I've never love, seen uh, it. Yeah, so he was, you know, that was his nickname, Chicken Man. He used to eat chicken, you know, in the dugout and before the game and all that. Um, so this wasn't the pickup. I, I just brought this in for reference, but I found an example of this, believe it or not, uh, where he actually autographed it. 
and inscribed uh, Chicken Man. Oh, wow. That's on so the card. cool. Dude, does John Wade Boggs fan know you have this card? Uh, no, I, I don't know. Maybe he'll see it on the episode here. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He may have one of these. I'd be highly surprised. I, he, I don't know how many of these are out there. but That's pretty uh, awesome. You know, just something unique. I'm, I'm kind of all over the map. I'm, I'm sort of the opposite of what you described out of my, I have a hard time focusing. And uh, that's an example of that, I guess. I do, I do too. That's why I'm trying to impose like my, these rules on myself because naturally I'm just like, Oh, I want that. I want that. I want like, I'm all over the place. <laughs> Every cool card I see, I'm like, I want that, but I got to draw the line with myself. <laughs> oh, I'm the same way. <laughs> uh, all right. I'll, I'll show a few pickups as well. And uh, so for me, I'm dude, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, well, I'm all over the place. I, I literally, I can't focus. I don't set build. Like I have a couple sets I built in my life. You guys know I have an MVP set that I've built, but I am literally, I, I go on eBay and I'm like ending soonest and I'll look through the whole day's ending all vintage. And then now I have collected a couple other guys, which you'll see. And, and it's just like, if it looks killer, then I'm going after it. I, there's no rhyme or reason. Even if I have them, I, I want another one. I don't care if it's a good looking, nice looking card. I'm like, Got to have it. And then I'll just sell other cards and cycle through. So with all that said, um, this is super random pickup right here. Random enough, but also thought through because my buddy Shane, it's perfect for this episode because Shane, we did a blind trade and he gave me a Mookie Betts card. And he had been talking to me a while about Mookie Betts. And I, I was asking him like, who's who's you think is going to make the hall of fame most likely because i really want to stick to the vintage and the way i collect is like these are like guaranteed like they're like coca-cola stocks right that's kind of how i want to collect and how i've always collected monkey bets is a little more of a gamble but he's probably the next guy on the list to make it as a as a hitter and so he i talked to him and he gave me some great advice and i collect gold cards of my trout so i bought this Update, yeah, baby. Gold in a nine. Love it. And Beautiful. I'm, oh, so stoked. Thing. So as you guys know, this is a parallel card. So it's perfect for the show. It's numbered to the year, which to me is just a whole nother collecting factor because they've done this since like 2001 or something like that. I'm not sure the whole year, but that is like, it's huge to me. So I love the gold and they're harder to grade and the pops are really low on the, I think there's like 112 of these or I could be off by give or take 20, but you know, I'm Mr. Pop now, <laughs> but I, I was so stoked to get this and I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of Mookie Betts just yet. I am a Mike, Mike Trout rabbit hole. I'm already deep in that, but I was really stoked to get this and I paid 360 bucks in an auction and it was, you know, I had lost one before that I it went too high. So I was really psyched, but this next card going down the same Avenue, this is like, this card I've wanted, you know, for what, six months now or four months. I don't know how long I've been collecting Mike Trout cards for. But this bad boy popped up and I won it. And this goes perfectly in my collection. Oh. This is a 2013 Mike Trout with the gold cup and the rookie gold cup. And it's a gem mint 10. And this I won as well for, I think, $360. And this thing was way higher that's During COVID, steal. yeah, and way higher. I tried to win two of these since I started collecting Mike Trout cards, and I did not win either. And I bid over four hundred, and this time I bid over four hundred. Well, I bid like four thirty. I wanted it, and it only went to three sixty. So I was just like so stoked. So this is numbered as well, right here, parallel of the original. And yeah, it's just like oh, so stoked. So now I That's got all kinds awesome of card. Yeah, I was really stoked. So you'll, you'll be going, thanking yourself for both of those, I think, over the next 10 years. Nice, yeah, nice 10 fire. years. Right. That's what I think. In 10 years, even if, if he has a great season before, then great. But if not, I just hold on to him. Then, because of Shane, again, another pickup because of uh, Mr. Shoebox Legend we have on today. Oh, I got the refractor nice. version because in that trade, he gave me the regular chrome. And I have the orange. I have the purple. I have, I have like, 12 of these i think now different variations just like we're talking about tonight i need, so, I, need I need sunglasses to when you show that card man that thing is i know Woo. i totally opposite of pepino man i i dove in deep on like collecting rainbows or like 
I love variations of the same card. So That's opposite. Awesome. And then got to stick with vintage, which I'm still collecting. I still buy majority of vintage. Trust me. One <laughs> out of 10, you know, is a ultra modern Mike Trout. But then I picked this up just recently this week, actually. And it just showed up. Sweet. And I had Beautiful. this in a five before and it was really far off centered and I sold it. I didn't even like displaying it. I mean, I know, I, dude, this is for my own collection. Everyone can do their own thing, but I couldn't look at it anymore because it was so off centered. I just couldn't enjoy it like I used to. So I sold it and then finally found this and the auction was so blurry that I just took a chance and I bid $92 or something. I won it for 80 something bucks and man, and it showed up and it's just killer. Looks like an eight. It's got a little line on it right here, but it man i was so stoked so those are my pickups awesome that's it man so kinda, i think mookie we all bets. Tied in. i gotta i gotta say something about mookie bets I, I i love mookie bets first of all you know when he was on the red sox i grew up a red sox fan and i honestly the the time i i felt like i kind of moved away from the red sox was when they stupidly traded him and uh man he you you cannot find a better guy to collect he is like in my opinion he's definitely going to be a hall of famer and if he continues on, he might be like people might he might climb the list of all time greats. This guy, man, defensively, he gets overlooked. He is like one of the best outfielders of all time defensively, in my opinion, that I've ever seen. Uh, fielding, throwing. Uh, the guy is just like such a great guy, too. Like teammates love him. Seems like a great guy. And, and he like just weird things, too. Like he he's like a great bowler. He bowls 300 games. Yeah. Uh, it's like things like that. I love because it to me, it just shows like. He's just a skilled, skilled person. Like he's just really good at everything he probably does. So I think, I think Mookie Betts cards are really have a bright future, you know, barring some crazy injury or something like that. But one yeah. of the best se individual seasons of all time in 2018 too. won a, a batting title an MVP and a world series all in the same year. You know, wow. it's very infrequently done. So great. Player. Awesome. Made me feel good about that purchase then. Thank you. Thanks guys. Uh, do you mind if I show one more? No, please. I want to see it. Shane, do you do you do any football? Uh, very little. I have a couple big cards and, and very little football, but I appreciate it. I just my hobby dollars never seem to go that far. Well, you, I know you're New England, so I figured I, I got to show a Tom Brady card here. Now, this is I would classify it as a recent pickup because I, I bought it raw, you know, kind of in the not you know maybe like a year ago or something like that. But I just graded it pretty recently with SGC, and uh, the reason I think. I've been hearing a lot lately. I don't know if you guys have seen all this stuff about the tops conference that was had actually out here in Arizona. And it made big news because the fanatics said like this month in March, they're going to come out with what they consider to be the, the biggest product. Like I forget the wording, but like it's the, the most generation, it's the biggest generational product release, you know, ever or something like that in, in a generation, I guess that's the word. Right. So people are all speculating, what's it going to be? And I've heard some people being like, oh, it's going to be, um, you know, they're going to put uh, memorabilia cards out from like iconic games like, uh, you know, Michael Jordan's oh. first game or uh, Mike Trout's first game or something like that. And I was thinking like, well, you know, they kind of they used to do that. Right. So the, the card that I have here, this is pretty obscure. Not a lot of people probably know these cards, but this is a 2003 get a good image of it it's it's you know it's not like the uh fanciest card in the world but it's a 2003 tom brady hog heaven card right but what's really cool about this is that is a game use football piece from uh an actual game in in his like first season that he started playing and this is what i love about this it's uh it says right on the back it says the enclosed piece of football was cut from an authentic football used in an official nfl game on 12 201 featuring the Patriots versus the Jets, uh, game use football, and they show a picture of the football. That's awesome. And that is cool. I'm telling you, I remember this game. This game, I remember watching it. Uh, Brady had taken over, whatever, a few games back for Bledsoe, and people were all, it was all a debate like, oh, sh should we keep, stay with him when Bledsoe comes back? And this was like a classic Brady game as we look back. This was like a telltale sign. They got down 13 nothing to the Jets on the road. The Jets had a pretty good team that year. And in classic fashion, Brady, you know, 
has a comeback. They ended up winning 16 to 13 on a last sec or something like that. 16 to 17 to 16 on a last second field goal by Vinatieri. And it's just like, it was so foreshadowing of what Brady's career was going to be. Cause like, you know, he didn't do anything crazy in the game, but he just made the plays when he had to and the game winning kick by Vinatieri. And then obviously they ended up winning the Super Bowl. But the point here is like, they used to do these, they used to do uh, game use cool stuff like this, where they actually would like say the game and show a picture of it. So I figured that would be cool to show because uh, you know, maybe they'll bring that back, but that's not something that hasn't been seen before. I think, I don't know if a lot of, some people may not even know that because if they just started collecting, you know, they probably haven't seen something like that. But I got to show one more thing now. I'll keep it quick. Yeah. I, I ran and grabbed it when he brought up the Brady card. But uh, one, of the, one of the things I've gotten into, just a, a small number of them, is graded tickets. Um, sort of the same idea, just, you know, tying it to an event or something. And uh, this is probably the coolest one I have. So this is from uh, the original, uh, the 2002 Super Bowl that oh. kind of launched the, you know, the Patriots legacy. Yeah, um, that last minute kick from Vinatieri. Um, so I just thought it was a really cool like item to have being a New England native and a Patriots fan. Uh, thought it was neat. Oh, that is so th that's the game for me, man. That that is the, my, my favorite game of all time. I like have the greatest memories of that first time my team won a championship while I was like, you know, able to remember it basically. Yeah, that that is awesome. Love Dude, it. that is awesome. <laughs> What's awesome is that I don't even like football. And I love that card and I love that ticket. Like I would collect that just because that's like, I mean, you could spend what, 2 million bucks for the football or they can divide it up and send it to collectors and put it in, package it in a way that we can all enjoy it. That's a, you know, a lot of people have different thoughts on that, but that's just awesome. And then the ticket, I mean, that's, wow. I love the ticket thing. I almost bought a lot of huge tickets a couple of years ago, like a couple of Jackie Robinson's and, and I, and I didn't pull the trigger and I'm super bummed about it. It was before the ticket craze. I just, my wife actually is like, Why don't you, you should get some tickets. This is years ago. And I was totally about to go on board with it. And I didn't, and now, you know, I, I think they've come down a lot and went up just like a lot of things, but I think they're awesome too. So cool. Right. Even just like, I have a bunch of tickets from like Pearl Jam concerts yep. uh, from, from uh, like one I went to. The first time my wife ever went to a Pearl Jam concert, it was like the greatest night of our life. It was out here in Phoenix. I still got the tickets, um, things like that. I wouldn't even mind. I don't even care what they grade. Just sending them in to get slabbed and right. like display it. Because like, I think it looks a lot better to display them in a slab than, you know, just kind of putting them out there or whatever. But I have a bunch of like, yeah, concert tickets, uh, old game tickets, Red Sox game stuff. There weren't nothing crazy happened, but I, I love having those. I think they're really cool. That is awesome. All right. Well, I'm stoked we did that. So now let's dive deep into what yeah, yeah. what we really wanted, what you guys really came here for, and that is variations in vintage. And that specifically is the tops buybacks. They bought back, or Shane's going to explain it to us, and they put stamps on them, and each set had different stamps. So whatever he's going to talk about, tell us all about these things. And to me... The thought to me is once I saw these on his channel, I was like, these are parallels. This is worth much more than the original 1975 tops without the stamps. Because now it's tops reproduced. Tops took this card back in their possession. However, they got it. I'm sure Shane knows and stamped the thing, put it back in a pack for us to pull again in the in this day and age. And to me, that makes it more valuable. And way more scarce. There's not too many with stamps on them. And it's just an awesome way to collect and something that was pack pulled. So, Shane, tell us all about it. And I know Adam's got questions. So, it's kind of a free for all. But, Shane, you're, you're taking over the floor and tell us every bit of knowledge you know about these types of things. Yeah. And uh, just interrupt as I go. I'll, I'll just uh, get into it here. So, uh, obviously, a buyback is exactly what it sounds like. It's a card that a manufacturer bought back uh, from circulation, just like any of us would and then somehow reissued it, you know, as you said, Dylan. So it's not unique to Tops. Uh, other companies have done this. I think like Donruss has Donruss Originals. I know Leaf did some. Um, so it's not unique to Tops, but I think Tops has done the best job at it. Um, and so there's a bunch of different flavors of them, but I think the three uh, main ones that I wanted to focus on are the pack-issued Tops foil-stamped 
buyback programs, just to kind of keep this from being a three hour long uh, episode. So, you know, one of them you're probably familiar with, and, and I've seen you show cards from it, Dylan. Um, so we'll start with that one. And, and that's the archive signature series cards that yes. have come out uh, since 2015. So these are, if you think about it, these are buybacks. Um, whoops, you got this in frame here. Um, this is a product where you get one card per box. It's it's autographed by the athlete. It's stamped and serial numbered, and it's it's kind of a high risk product because you just you just get one card and you could get a scrub. Um, you're not likely to get it a Jim Rice or a Hall of Famer. That's the exception of the rule. Um, but they started this set in 2015. Uh, they still make them to this day. Yeah, Dylan, I saw your uh, Dave Winfield one of one that you uh, showed off recently. Um, so I think this is the program that people are most familiar with out of the, the three that we're going to talk about. Um, relatively straightforward. Um, I don't know if you have any questions on those or if I should go into the other two. That let me let me ask one real quick for me. Um, do you know how how did the the buyback happen? Like so, who who whose cards were they? Were they just cards that were still at tops or something or like so this, uh, like from a card shop from a purse? Like who who sold them to tops? This is going to be a little bit of a disappointing answer, but it, but it brings uh, me to one of the points I wanted to make, which is that there's a lot of mystery around these things. They're, they're very Ooh, I like poorly, that. I like that. yeah, they're very poorly documented. Um, I, I don't know that anybody is aware of you know how Tops is, is going about acquiring these from dealers, or uh, presumably they go to shows or you know have dealers that they buy them from in bulk. But I've never been able to verify you know where they actually source these from. Um, except that, you know, they're not extra cards that they have at Topps headquarters or that they've stashed. These are cards that were out in the real world, in people's collections, being tossed around. Uh, in some cases, you'll find them where, you know, they've been written on or, you know, here's one. I, you know, this one, uh, you can see whoever owned this the first time around, you know, crossed out California Angels and wrote Cubs. You know, so cool. After That's a trade. So, cool. so, you know, somebody did that in their collection before Topps bought this back. So these are... These cards, you know, have been out in the wild, living their lives before they were, you know, rebought by Tops, stamped and reissued. Uh, but as far as how many of them were produced, where they get them from, there's really no information about that. There's no population information. You know, I suspect a lot of the big players like Hall of Famers are even one of ones in a lot of cases, um, even if they don't say that. Um, that. You know, with one exception, they don't serial number these um, outside of the archive signature series. So there's... There's a lot of mystery and just unknown about these, which I think maybe hurt them a little bit, or maybe that's one reason they're not as popular as they could be. But um, I find it intriguing, so I don't, I don't know exactly where they source these from, and I've never been able to to get that answer. It'd be a good question to ask Tops at a, a panel at the National or something. Yeah, because I, I, the for, honestly, the, I, I had not heard of buybacks until um, they just did it with. What did they do with the Goldschmidt and the uh, what was it? Goldschmidt and Judge? Aaron right? Judge. Yep. In Bo uh, was it Bowman Chrome or something like that? I think and so. so yeah. When I heard that, Pops, I was like, that, that is Pops. a great idea. Pops Chrome. Tops Chrome. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Tops Chrome. Uh, just like base cards, they were buying for twenty bucks, and like I was like, that is a great idea. And then I found out that they had done that. You know, Tops had <laughs> done that before. So I think I love that idea. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah, no, no. This is uh, so, Shane. Let me be... let me ask you a question. So, you might go into this shortly, but on a value sense, so me and me and Adam, you gifted both of us a turn back the clock with a repackaged stamp on it, and this is it says Rediscover Tops. So this is an original '87 Tops card, and they both have stamps. What's a value like on a regular card on my eBay store? I sell this card for a dollar sixty nine to two dollars okay and what would this go for like my mind it like if i were just judge this knowing what i know now i'm like this is a 15 dollar card what what does something like this go for yeah you're pretty much right on the nose and, and i'll you know i'll give an asterisk there which i'll explain in a second but here's another version of that oh. uh that same card this is from Adam. the 2016 buyback program um and i picked this one up about a month ago and it was it was actually 15 dollars on the nose it's kind of uncanny that you you mentioned no 15 bucks. But what I'll say is that um, it's really hard to comp these cards or compare them because there just aren't any of them out there. Like I looked before the episode and if you wanted to buy a rediscover Roberto Clemente, like the two that you guys are holding up, you couldn't buy one right now if you had a thousand dollars to throw at it because they're just, 
is it well, one buy on the this internet one. to buy? Um, you can buy this yeah, one I'm not that suggesting, one. obviously, that's a thousand dollar card. You Mine's know, don't get me wrong, sale. but Mine was you know, a if gift. somebody okay. wanted one of those, they couldn't buy it uh, no matter what their budget was. And I, I just find that really neat. Like they're they're just very unique, and I love items like that that are uh, scarce. Even if if it is manufactured scarcity, I'll grant you that. But uh, it's it's just kind of neat to know how few of them are out there. But that's what cards are now. I mean, the modern cards, it's all manufactured scarcity. So even and, even vintage cards are manufactured scarcity. I mean, they're all manufactured to a point. I mean, it, that it's that's like the ultimate question. But yeah, do that. I love I love that. I was like when you gave us these two cards, you gave me one and then you gave him one. I was like, man, did you give away your all of them? So you found like every one that exists. I have uh, at one point, you know, I probably should have admit this, but I, I got way into these. And uh, I think at my height of buyback collecting, I had to up into the five figures of, uh, you know, in terms of numbers of buyback cards, a lot of them commons and scrub players, you know, like anything else, when you pulled one of these out of a pack, your odds of getting a Roberto Clemente were slim and you're more likely to get, you know, Gene Kleins or some common that you never heard of. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, they're intriguing. So, um, so before I before you continue on, this is like ridiculously fascinating. So going back uh, in 2006, Upper Deck came out with cards, and like you were talking about, I have buybacks that they put back in packs, and I pulled them, and they were one per case. Yep. And they were they were Gaudi cards, but they were one per case. Wow. So I, I yeah. So keep going on the knowledge you know about these because I'm fat. I mean, blows my mind. It, when I when I when I discovered these through your channel, changed everything. Yeah. So um, archive signatures being the first. Um, the second one I wanted to touch on is probably my favorite of the three, and it's it's the Topps Heritage box topper buybacks. Um, so they're easy to identify. This is one here. Um, Hold on. They have a very large, you know, out of all the buybacks, the largest stamp uh, by far. You can see this foil stamp here. Uh, if I tilt it in the light, maybe you can see it a little better. Oh, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. 50th, uh, 50th anniversary. anniversary. And then in really small print uh, below it, it lists the year of the original top set that the buyback's from. And then the year of the, the set that Tops Heritage is, uh, you know, where this is included as a box topper. So the way these were distributed, which I think is awesome, they came uh, as a box topper in a hobby box of Tops Heritage. So you would buy your, you know, 24 pack Tops Heritage hobby box. And on top of the packs, there'd be a single wrapped buyback, just one card in a wrapper. You would open it up and you would get one of these, you know, 50th anniversary buyback cards. And just like with the other ones we've talked about, it's more than likely a common player and not a superstar. But there are superstars and Hall of Famers out there. I have a couple of the show here. Um, but when you think about it, it, there were other types of box toppers as well. So you get like, I think you get 12 hobby boxes in a case usually. Uh, you might only get six of these in a case because there are other, you know, box topper types. Um, so there's maybe five or six of these per case. I don't know that it's ever been confirmed. Um, so somewhat rare. And what's cool about them, they're, they're the year that Topps Heritage is paying tribute to. Um, so it's a really um, interesting way for collectors to be able to see the original design and the revamped Topps Heritage kind of side by side. I know, uh, Dylan, I know you're big into card design. Um, I know a lot of people that are kind of design nuts and maybe people that are opening a, a box of Topps Heritage, they don't have an original 1969 to compare these cards to. And by getting one as a box topper, they can kind of see side by side, you know, the original card and then the re the remade Topps Heritage card. So, and these started back in 2008 in Topps Heritage, which would have been the 59 set. And they continue to this day. So even in 2022, you could have bought a hobby box of 2022 Heritage and you might have found a 1973 Topps card with that 50th anniversary stamp, you know, on the front as your box topper. I never, wow. I, no clue, had no idea. No that. idea, me either, because I never bought a box of Heritage ever, minus some blasters. But dude, to me, that just makes them, that's so cool. So that 69 you have there was a commemorative Topps Heritage. They, they produced the 69 cards in that. Right. This yeah. This would have been uh, 2018 Topps Heritage because it's, it's always a uh, 50 years back that they're doing the heritage setup. So yeah, oh, in, in gotcha. 2018 Heritage when they were doing 69 Tops, your buyback card would always be a a 69 Tops card in that product. So the only cards that exist for this type of buyback are 59 through 73, and presumably this spring we'll we'll get 1974 buybacks in this year's Heritage release. You know, for this 
this program. So it's go, it's 15 years running now of uh, of these heritage buybacks. So these are my favorite ones by far. Dude, you're good. You're, you're blowing our mind. I'm tripping around because I thought that I thought they ended. I thought they didn't do buybacks anymore. I had no idea that you could buy a Topps Heritage hobby box and and you get a box topper that you can pull one of those like. I, I want to go buy a box of heritage this year. I, I'd be almost like disappointed to pull any other any other type of box yeah. topper because it's just perfect. And you know what I love about these, and I think why it's a perfect topic for this show is like I, I remember you guys talking about how turn back the clock is you know a way that collectors could kind of get to learn about the cards of old or reappreciate the cards of old. Here's another one. Like so, they even have combo cards. Wow. Um, you know, like this that got heritage stamp. There's your 50th anniversary uh, stamp in the middle. Um, so this is just is a great way stamp? to connect collectors to the cards of old that they didn't maybe didn't get to experience in the same way that those turn back the clock cards did, you know, back in the eighties for a lot of us. That is, that is because I mean, uh, yeah, my mind's blown because like I've said before on videos, like, Hey, if fanatics and tops were smart, they would start doing turn back the clock again because it will uh, increase the interest in, you know, vintage cards, previous players in the past. Um, but now that I know that, like, they should instead they should just do like inserts of the actual cards, right? <laughs> like, yeah, and that's so essentially like what a they are, just with a stamp. Um, and and yep. you kind of, in my opinion, you kind of need the stamp. So this is, I do want to be fair and talk about some of the cons of this because there are people that don't like these. Um, and some people will say, well, you ruined a perfectly good vintage card that was out in circulation by putting this stamp on it. I've heard that argument made before. Um, I don't really buy into it. I mean, there's so many copies of these cards out there. And a lot of times these are lower grade cards that have been in people's collections and been beat up. And by stamping it, it really gives it a, like a uniqueness and it makes the card way greater, I think, than it would be as just a beat up version like the other, you know, 30,000 beat up versions that are floating around out there. So, uh, but I, I do know people that say like, get kind of grumpy, you know, like, you, how could you do that to a, a vintage card? You know, it's sacrilege. Because you like if you wanted to grade one of those would the grading company, like just do it authentic or like uh, basically it wouldn't grade well anyway because of it's got the stamp on it now. Oh, right? he's got I, I, believe it or not. I think I think they will actually grade them as buybacks and note it on the label like, you know, 2016 Tops Heritage buyback. Yeah, I've, I've been Love considering it. submitting some of mine. I've never done that before, but I have seen some graded examples and they, they will grade them as such. So when you do oh, that, you it. pretty much have a pop one, you know guaranteed or a low pop card so man if uh, i'm just thinking like all the like possibilities like this is just scratching the surface of what like fanatics could do with this stuff they they i mean think about what they they could do like chase cards like you could put mickey man like there's so much raw vintage out there that's at card shows that like is not that expensive even but like if you put like a mickey mantle raw vintage card in in these packs right as like a chase card or something like that that I think that would that would make some waves for sure. Or you could do like a redemption card. Hey, this is a redemption card for a PSA 5 1965 Mickey Mantle card or, or whatever. Like you could really do some create creative stuff with that, I think, that maybe they haven't even done yet with this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, I got my there's brain a lot going. of possibilities. They're, they're really cool. Um, I, I just I completely went down the rabbit hole on these for years and uh, I still look for them. I have one here that just came in this week that I'll. I'll get to in a minute. So, so uh, Ken, anything else you want to talk about on the heritage yeah, side? Yeah. There's one more. Well, I want to. I want to. So the whole PSA graded thing. I, I love this because I, I checked it out. I was searching for graded ones, and we talked about this. I talked to you about it, and and it, and it blew my mind that PSA. I mean, it makes sense because it's a different card now. This 75 tops. Any one of the stamps has to have a denotation, just like a parallel card. And for me. As a collector and a lot of like modern collectors, the, the whole thought in this world of graded cards is pop reports. So you can go out and we can grade our three Clementes and that's probably pop three. And and to me, it, it for like a money, I mean, I'm talking like the reason you're on the show right now is just to pump these up so your collection become worth more. <laughs> I was joking about, I was joking with Shane about this. But for reals, in, in all honesty, 
I, it's just a, such a cool way. I don't think it defaces these cards at all. I think it brings more value to them and it brings a whole nother aspect of collecting it. You're opening these packs up and you're receiving a card that was packaged up a hundred years ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, whatever it is. I, I love it. So keep going, go, go, keep going, Shane. You're on a roll. This is blowing our minds. Yeah, so the, uh, the third one, you know, th those are the first two. The third one is they, they did a run of pack-issued buybacks in, like, the flagship top set uh, for a, a four-year period from 2014 through 2017. And it was a different stamp each year. Um, I got an example here of, of each of these. So um, 2014, they used the, uh, like, the old school, like, you can see it's really small on this card. Yeah, uh, in the upper corner here, that old school tops like vintage logo. Mm. Um, I think I sent you. Yeah, I have one. These, Adam. Um, yes, I've got one. Yeah, there, there you go, Dylan. Um, so these were 2014. This is a Doc Ellis rookie card right here. Buyback so, is probably so the only one. Uh, so one my pause it. That's a Doc Ellis rookie right there. That's yep. insane. So pause it right there. Like, so PSA is going to denote this. 1975 tops or 1969 tops or 74 tops and they're going to denote in the thing that it's going to say this was from what did you say what year oh, these are 2014 this is the first year they did this program 2014 so that i find that just fascinating and awesome yep so that was that was the first year um second year they did uh this stamp which was it's uh tops original um so you can see let me tilt it in the light here but uh, right here above the X in uh, Red Sox, there's a, a Topps original stamp. Yes. Mm. I like that. Um, yeah. So th these were done in 2015, same concept. They would be issued in uh, hobby packs of Topps. I think a uh, Topps update, especially, I remember. Uh, I remember opening a hobby box of Topps update, and uh, you would pull maybe four or five of these in a in a hobby box. So they were inserted like one every six packs or so. Wow. Um, and the card could be anywhere from 1957. Uh, you won't find these 56 and older because of the larger card size. They had to fit them in, in the packs. Um, but 57 through about 1980 uh, for these first two years, they didn't do any cards beyond 1980 uh, for these first two years in 2014 and 2015. So it's only that uh, 23 year period between 57 and 80. Wow. Um, I think then in, in 2016, um, they did the program again, and they used a 65th anniversary stamp. Um, oh, so yours it. is different than ours. Yeah, this is uh, the, the wow. one you guys have. We'll talk about in a second. Those are from 2017, the final year of the program. This 2016 has a 65th anniversary uh, stamp instead. And, and I think I have one here that's a little easier uh, to look at. Um, from the 2016 program. So yeah, so like here's a like a parallel of a parallel. Here's a Jerry Remy. Oh wow! Uh, oh, somebody had him, no. Well, uh, rookie cup Jerry Remy, and you can really, you can clearly see the 65th um, anniversary stamp there. That's awesome. And a, a change they made this year in 2016 to, to add another wrinkle to this because tops is is tops. Uh, these have different color foil. Um, so this is like a black foil stamp, but you'll find the, the 2016s with all different color stamps. There's red, there's um, black, silver, gold. Um, the golds are even one of one. That's that's the only serial numbered uh, buyback that they did in, in this program. Um, I have in my binder here off to the side, I can probably drag it out later. I have a Nolan Ryan one of one, 1975 tops um, in my I was waiting. I was waiting for you to bring that one up. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll bring that out. So that was 2016 was these uh, 65th anniversaries. And the other change that happened this year, in addition to the multiple colors of foil, they do make these beyond 1980. So you could get, you know, starting in 2016, the cards that you remember from, you know, being a kid in the 80s um, included in the program. Wow. And then the last year that they did it, this is the, the one that you guys have the, uh, the Clemente of was Rediscover Tops. So these were done in 2017. Uh, here's a Jim Abbott rookie cup. Oh man, I love Jim Abbott. Yeah, yeah. really cool card. Um, and you can see the uh, you know down the side of the card here, uh, rediscover tops. Oh yeah. And just like in 2016, they did different color foils for these as well. So um, there's bronze, uh, silver, gold, I think blue and red. Um, and they're different rarity levels. 
um, depending on what color the stamp is. But again, no real information released about pop counts or how many of these are out there for any card. So it's a little weird. And just because a card exists in one stamp color doesn't mean it doesn't exist in another as well. So like you could have this Jim Abbott in a bronze like I do here, and you could have it in a silver. Uh, like I think the Clementes that I sent to you guys are, are silver uh, foil stamps. Yes. And then the, the other big change. So in 2017, it was really like the height of this program with the Rediscover program. And so they included these across a bunch of different Topps products. So not only could you get these in Topps flagship, the Rediscovers, but you could get them in like an Allen and Ginter pack or other other packs that Topps uh, put out that year. So they really spanned all of their different sets uh, in 2017 with that Rediscover program. Man, I, dude, it, trust me. If I was at, if I, if I would have pulled like a rediscovered pack, one of these stamps, vintage cards out of any of my blasters I bought over the last couple of years, I would have blown my mind. I would treasure it. Yeah, and I, you know, I think I mentioned this to you, Dylan. But one of the reasons I got turned on to these, and I, I, I don't mean to knock tops at all, but during the era where this program was going on, I found like most of their inserts to be like pretty uninspired and not exciting and just kind of boring cards that I really wasn't excited to pull out of a pack. But, you know, so to me, it's like, if you're going to give me this or you're going to give me a, a reissued, you know, vintage card that's been out in the wild, that it's just so much, there's no question which, which one I'd rather pull out of the pack. Totally. So cool. Uh, and I love the fact that they're not all, they're, they're not all mint. I've seen plenty. Like I have, you know, it, it it's makes it just that much more cool. And it does, obviously we want, the mint one from 75, but it doesn't, it, it, you, you're not disappointed, right? Yeah. And it's one of those cases in the hobby, you know, there's plenty of examples of this where, you know, they're scarce enough where condition almost goes out the window. Like if you see one and it's a player that you collect or a, a team you're into or a card that's significant to you, just snatch it up, you know, regardless if it has wrinkles in it or rounded corners, because you, you're probably not going to see another one quite honestly. That's cool. Uh, any, any, any more uh, questions, Adam, or add-ons? This is insane. Uh, it's, I love just, it. it's interesting to me that, like, uh, so they stopped in 2017. Basically, they n this hasn't really been done during the boom. No, right? no. Other than so, Top's Heritage, you know, they can yeah, do Yeah, Top's Heritage, which, but I'm thinking, like, yeah, like, what if, what if they did this for basketball, football? Like, what if Top started doing this again? in the you know the the flagship set you know uh i mean all the like what if they what if they went back right like i'm thinking junk wax era right like everyone's got these millions of junk wax era cards right i'm thinking like both ends of it what would it wouldn't it stimulate the sports card hobby if there was all this news that like hey tops is buying back uh 100,000 1987 bo jackson future star cards and you got to go to your local card shop and, you know, it's a limit of uh, five per person or, or whatever. You know, I'm sure they'll put all these rules. And then Tops is going to have Bo, Jock Bo Jackson autograph a thousand of them. And we're going to insert them into packs of the, of the you know, series one set or whatever, like as a chase card. I mean, there's all these ideas they could do with this, with that idea of buyback. I think it would get more people who maybe aren't, you know, that were in the hobby that like still got these cards just sitting there in the basement or whatever, like. Maybe we'll wake them up and get them. Oh, I could go get some. I could go get three bucks or five bucks for this card that's worthless, basically. Uh, like wh when I saw them do that with the, they were giving doing twenty bucks for those Aaron Judge and Goldschmidt cards. Now those were obviously you know newer cards, but but I I, I think the same idea could apply to junk wax era cards, right? Like <laughs> absolutely. Like, what, one of the only screw a lot for the hobby. One of the only statistics I was able to verify related to these in, in 2017, when they did that big rediscover program, which was really the height of it, um, they uh, allegedly bought back 2 million total cards and stamps. So there, in, in, in totality, there are up to 2 million rediscovers out there. But in, in this case, you know, because those uh, came out in 2017, there are even recent players um, included in that set. Like, this is a Mike Stanton rookie card, Giancarlo oh, wow. Stanton from 2010, um, and it's a rediscover buyback. And they even had 2015 wow. and 2016 buybacks. You know, cards that had only been in circulation for a year or two um, oh, wow. got purchased and, and included in this program. That makes sense so, to me. 
so even modern collectors, um, it really it could appeal to, to anybody um, across the board. Um, like, and I've got some other like cool Panini. ones I can show here. Panini, yeah, Panini could do that with like, because all you hear is like, oh, they, they, they overprinted, right? With they, they printed way too many uh, Luka Doncic rookie cards. What if they did a buyback? You know, we're buying back and we're going to get a, a, a bunch of them signed by Luca or whatever, you know, and that way you're taking you're, you're kind of like fixing a mistake like you overprinted. But we can go back. We're going to buy those cards from you. And you know what? We're going to take a hit financially, but it's going to increase the interest in the hobby and the demand for the newer sets that are coming out. I, I think from That'd a business awesome. standpoint, it's a no brainer. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. One of the other things that's a knock on these, depending on what type of collector you are, I, I'm random and I just like to enjoy cards and it's great. But if you're like the completest type and you want to complete a set or have a run of a player, you're, you're never going to be able to, to do that with these cards. And I think that that's maybe hurt them a little bit. Um, no, no matter what your hobby budget is, you couldn't go out and build a run of Willie McCovey buybacks from his, you know, 60 rookie through the 80s, like, or 70s, whenever he hung them up. But it's just not, possible so it's difficult to like organize and enjoy them to an extent and that's how i came up with you know dylan referenced it earlier but the concept of a franken set because I, I wanted to display these and be able to enjoy them uh but you can't build a complete set so i, I just put enough pages in a binder to hold cards one through 792 and i just put a buyback in it could be from any buyback program any year as long as it's that card number and just filled up that whole binder so as you flip through it There'll be a 1975 card right next to a 1987 card right next to a 1964 card on the page with, you know, three different stamps on them. But it at least organizes it in a way where I don't feel like I'm, you know, totally scattershot. And it's it's a really fun uh, album to just sit back and look through. It's like it really is the history of uh, top space ball cards like in one album. Hmm. So it's been cool. I love that. Dude, it's awesome. That was awesome. And, and I, ha I have a couple more I can show here. Yeah, that are please. Kind of bangers. Yeah. One in particular that I know uh, Adam would appreciate. So here's uh this is an Ernie Banks uh, oh, 58 man. All-Star. It's got the 65th anniversary stamp here. So um, first ever All-Star subset, as we know. So kind of a, a unique one uh, to get. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah. Also have uh, the Yastrzemski All-Star from 1969. Hey. Um, pops heritage so you can't you can find these hall of fame players they're just you know few and far between but they're out there yeah um, and that to me that's one of the things another thing i like about these that i haven't touched on it, it's sort of uh the equivalent of like collecting cards like it was when i was seven again um because back then like you, you couldn't just get any card that was out there if you had an internet connection and a credit card i was limited to what i pulled out of a pack or what my brothers pulled out of a pack so like set building was a real challenge. And when you got a significant card, it felt, you know, awesome and significant. And it kind of feels like that all over again, just because these are so scarce. So um, they're just really fun to collect. Um, this one came in the mail today and I was so glad it arrived in time because I know, you know, this card, Adam, but it's the, oh, yeah. uh, that's a Mickey Mantle card. Tops Yankees that has uh, <laughs> Mickey Mantle depicted uh, as a coach. Yep. First base coach. That's a mantle card right there. <laughs> that is awesome. So cool. so, uh, this, I figured this is the closest I'll ever get to a, you know, a mantle buyback. There, there yeah. are some out there, but if and when they surface that, you know, they go for huge oh. money. But uh, believe it or not, I got this for $15 like Woo. just this past week. Oh, That's my. awesome. That is cool. I love and, that. And then I have one more. This is sort of the cream of the crop. So in, in 2017, oh. they did uh, – you know, they put out these like advertisement cards for the Rediscover program. Um, and on the front of the card, they did a few of these. But one of the images they used was uh, Roberto Clemente's final card, 1973 Tops, uh, very iconic. And I actually have from the 2015 program, the, the 73 Clemente. Wow. That's crazy. So that's one of my it. better ones. That is awesome. Yeah, they're, they're tons of fun. It's a it's an addicting thing to get into, for sure. <laughs> Man, I learned so much. I I, I did too. not know any of that. Yeah, that was like in insanely like so much knowledge to take in, and and I I don't man, that was just awesome. I feel like anyone listening probably learned a ton. I mean, a lot of that stuff. I have been in baseball cards my entire life, but if I never pulled a card out of a pack without being on YouTube. I didn't know it existed. 
and to have you know find your channel and come across these and realize they exist as a guy who used to buy wax packs and open them i would have been buying all the ones looking for those for sure because it's right up my alley um, if, if you're a player collector or a team collector, it's, it's just a neat way to, to kind of add a wrinkle to your collection or something unique that you just don't see that often. So I just love the idea that of like the journey, right? Like so, uh, someone had that card and who knows, they, they had it for years and then Tops bought it back somehow from them. And then they insert it into these packs or whatever. And then here it is again, like with the, with the Tops stamp on it. I mean, I just love that idea. I think it's really cool. Similar to how I think card on cards are cool, but I actually think this is even cooler. <laughs> so, so I, I love it. Yeah, that was awesome. Dude, that was so, that was so fun. I feel, I feel honored that we had you on here and like, as just a pure collector myself, I mean, I'm not, I don't know. I, I'm not putting myself in any box, but as somebody who doesn't, who hasn't studied like card knowledge and where these things came from and how each card was pulled from a pack, and I'm learning as I go on YouTube. It's a real pleasure to come across somebody who really knows their stuff and has been involved in this hobby in a deep sense on that with others and with a community of people. It, man, that was great. So thank you, Shane. Thanks for coming on here and sharing that. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys having me. It was a blast. So Yeah, thanks, uh, Shane. Adam, anything you want to add to this? No, I just now I'm I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna be looking for these now. <laughs> Good luck. It. Yeah, right. Shane, any it's any final well. words? No, I appreciate you having me on. Like I said at the beginning, I, I really enjoy uh, both your channels. I, I love this show, and uh, it's a little bit almost surreal to be uh, to be on as a guest. So I really, really do appreciate it. That's awesome. So, so with you guys. With that said, I'm gonna have Shane's link. It'll be in the description. Just click on it subscribe to his channel you will not regret it you will love everything he shows he shows an excitement and exhilaration for all different types of cards and you can learn a ton like me and uh yeah so thank you shane thanks adam this is a epic time episode number six is in the books episode number seven in two weeks on adam's show and uh that's it guys so i hope everybody has a good night and uh, we'll talk to you guys later take it easy